I think just constantly leading with value and teaching people things is one of the best things that I've ever done for my business. Hello and welcome to episode 191 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by Denver-based agent Riley Winger. Now four years into her real estate career, Riley's initial interest in the industry came as an investor. Buying a property and using the house hacking method, Riley was able to secure housing while bringing in passive income to offset the cost. Since getting her license, Riley is building a sphere of clients interested in investing themselves. Riley shares her tips and strategies for successful house hacking and how her presence on TikTok is leading to nearly 50% of her business. From the type of content she is creating and why a focus on personal branding has been so important to her growth, our conversation is full of strategies you can implement into your own business. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, the Smart Agents Magazine is available and full of insights and strategies designed to help real estate agents grow their businesses. Inside, you'll find interviews and advice from leading real estate professionals, marketing tips to flood your business with leads, and even swipe and deploy files full of practical tools to enhance your business. Be sure to click the link in the episode description to claim a free digital issue. Also, if you enjoy this conversation, be sure to like and subscribe. The Smart Agents Podcast streams on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, and of course, YouTube. And finally, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to today's featured interview with Riley Winger. Be sure to check her out on Instagram at realestateriley underscore Denver. You know, really the way I like to start everything out is if you could just introduce yourself to us a little bit, who you are and where you're at in the country. Yeah. Hey, my name is Riley Winger. I am in Denver, Colorado, so technically Arvada, but the Denver metro area. Uh, Born and raised here. And yeah, I'm a realtor. Absolutely love it. And I'm also a real estate investor. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about, you know, your initial uh, interest in real estate, how all that came about. I understand that you did quite a bit of traveling right out of out of college. Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. So traveling is actually kind of um, in a weird way how I got into real estate. So I was living abroad for two years after I graduated. I was a teacher in Spain and then I was spending summers um, leading group programs. So I was uh, spending a summer in Thailand and then I did a summer in Peru. And then I decided to move back to the States. I really wanted to focus on my career because teaching definitely was not my (laughs) long term passion. It was just a way for me to travel. Um, So I came back and I got what I thought was my dream job. I was working for a study abroad company and um, all all the <laughs> all the descriptions fit, but it just turns out that I'm not a cubicle person. And so I was just sitting there day in and day out miserable. And I was just trying to figure out how I could, you know, get out of that kind of job. And I started looking into ways of fi- finding and making passive income. And then I stumbled across real estate investing. And then I just kind of became obsessed with that. And then I bought my first investment property. And then it was COVID and being in the travel industry was not a great place. Place to be. So I decided to um, try my hand in real estate and never really looked back. Awesome. So, I mean, getting into real estate investing at such a young age, what was it that, you know, what sparked that? What was it that was like, okay, this is, this is for me and I want to get, do this now rather than wait, you know, until I have a career behind me and the, the money. Yeah. It was really, yeah. It was really two things. One was kind of like I was saying, it just, I really wanted to find a way to not have to rely on a salary and have some more uh, freedom in life just to be able to continue traveling. But my dad had recently gotten interested in real estate investing. So he was behind the scenes kind of kicking me in the butt, trying to get me interested. And um, so he had his way. And so I finally bought my first investment property. So that's awesome. And then, so you know, moving towards, you know, getting your, your license for yourself and, you know, uh, becoming an agent, what, um, what was that process like and how did you kind of get, get started and, you know, get to, uh, I, I'm assuming set up with a brokerage and, and everything. Yeah. So when I first started, I actually was uh, not planning on getting my license. I was planning on getting my MBA and was planning um, a whole different venture for myself. Um, but like I said, I was in the travel industry during COVID. So I decided to take essentially an assistant job for a busy broker. And so I became a transaction coordinator and a property manager. And so I was not even licensed, but then I really saw what it was like to be a great agent in the city. And he he's my, um, my managing broker and mentor. He is 
big into real estate investing. He works with a lot of investors. So it just was fascinating to me. So I decided to drop out of my MBA program and then I got licensed as an agent. Awesome. And, you know, so with your own investing and, uh, you know, the stuff that, you know, with working with investors, house hacking is a big, you know, concept and topic that uh, is out there. Tell me a little bit about, you know, what that is and, and how you've done it personally and what you, you know, teach your clients. Yeah. House hacking is an incredible strategy. So it's a, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're ha- you're hacking your house. So there's a ton of different ways that you can do it. So you can um, be as aggressive or as passive with it as you want. So on the more passive end, you can buy a house, live in it for a year or two, and then buy another one and rent out the one you were previously living in. You can buy a multifamily property, live in one of the units and rent out the others. Or, you know, you can live in a single family house and rent out bedrooms within your house. So it really just depends on how aggressive you want to be with the strategy. Right. How well, I mean, I know that the Denver market is, you know, it's always, always in the new unit. It's one of those big up and coming markets. I know personally, a lot of younger folks live yeah. there. So I have to imagine that that's a really good market for that type of investing. Yeah, it is. And that's really the reason I did it is just because housing in Denver is incredibly expensive. And um, I don't want to say unaffordable, but it is difficult to make it work on more of like an average salary. So that's why it is so popular here. And I think it's just growing and growing in popularity. I would say a majority of my clients at this point are house hacking in some way, shape or form. And um, it's just a way for you to get into a property, but not be house poor. Right. And when you are looking for either a property for yourself or for your clients, what are some of the things that, you know, maybe it's the the type of neighborhood that it is, maybe the floor plan. What are some of the, the, the kind of key things that you're looking for to make sure that it is going to be a wise investment for you? Yeah. So, I mean, I think it really boils down to the numbers and you need to look at it as, you know, you have to make sure it works for you in two ways. It needs to a work for you and your lifestyle that you want, but it also needs to make sense as a rental property, right? So it's not going to make sense for you to purchase a one bed, one bath, and then want to also rent out a one bedroom house. So it just needs to make sense for you and what you're trying to achieve. But kind of the sweet spot that I have found, especially here in Denver, just because, you know, the multifamily properties are few and far in between and they're very pricey and oftentimes need a lot of renovations and upfront cash. So what a lot of what myself and a lot of my clients are doing is we're finding single family homes with a higher bedroom bathroom count and something that has a separate entrance into the basement. So this allows for essentially you creating what I like to call a faux duplex. So for example, my property that me and my partner currently live in now, we have a ranch with a basement and our basement has a fully separate entrance. So we once we purchased it, we put in an extra kitchen in the basement and now we rent it out to some tenants that have become friends and now they pay for over half of our mortgage which is amazing right absolutely yeah definitely and um you know i I have several friends that have done that as well here at the beach um you know they have a fully you know they've renovated their downstairs where they live downstairs and they Mm -hmm. they rent out the the whole upstairs house and have turned it really into more of a vacation home uh over the summer but um yeah i think he's he's getting everything paid for now he doesn't pay a dime for the house anymore yeah and with our other properties we we now live for free it's allowed us to pay off of both of our cars pay off of our debt you know so it's been it's been really fruitful for us right with your uh you know once you got your license, how big of a part of, you know, uh, getting that message out there about house hacking and educating your sphere and, you know, um, you know, clients, you know, about how you've done things, how, how much of that education is part of your marketing strategy? It's a big part. And I mean, I do come from a teaching and education background, so I just genuinely enjoy teaching others. But as you know, a sales strategy, I think just constantly leading with value and teaching people things is one of the best things that I've ever done for my business, just because then it establishes you as knowledgeable and a professional in the space. And then people will seek you out and ask you questions and ask for your expertise and therefore want you as an agent. Yeah. What different avenues are you using to get your message out there? Yeah, I've really been focusing on TikTok. So TikTok has been my big one, um, but I'm slowly integrating Instagram. And um, so those are my two main ones right now. With TikTok, um, you know, a lot of the the people that we talk to, um, you know, they've tried it and 
it just, it didn't work for me. So how, how have you find, how have you found to get TikTok to work and who's your audience base? Yeah. TikTok has been amazing. I would say probably like 30 to 50% of my business at this point is coming from TikTok. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think my audience really is that first time home buyer, someone who is interested in investing, but doesn't necessarily have the funds to do so just because to buy a traditional investment property, you need 20 to 25% down or more to get into a property. Whereas if you're house hacking, you really can do, you know, I've had a VA do it with 0% down, or most people are doing it within like three and a half to 5% down. So you can get into investing in that way. So it's someone who's interested in creating an investment portfolio in the long term or utilizing real estate in a strategic way. And I'm teaching how to do that and how to make savvy and smart real estate decisions. Right. With TikTok, how are you targeting that, um, you know, particular demographic? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a lot of trial and error, if I'm honest, and just kind of seeing what sticks. But I think it is really just showing up authentically and talking to people like they're people and not trying to just, you know, make your content perfect in this like beautiful thing. I really do a lot of just talking to someone like it's my client or like it's my friend. And what I find really helpful and something I say regularly when people ask me about content creation is document, don't create. And that's something that I think is really important because, you know, if a client asks me a great question that I think a lot of people have that same question, I'll just go in and record a video about that. And then people find a lot of value in that because there's there, they have the same question too. So just making sure that I'm just documenting what's going on and answering the questions that people already have. And I think that's where a lot of my content comes from. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, a lot of times when people are, you know, trying to figure out how to set up a uh, content calendar or even come up with the ideas, a lot of it, <clears throat> I mean, really, you know, like you said, it just comes from the co the questions that your clients are already asking. Just mm -hmm. kind of make a little database of those and there's your whole content calendar. Yeah, just making making it a habit of writing down the questions that they have. Or honestly, I mean, I'll batch some content, but my best videos are always when I just, you know, I'm like, okay, I need to pause as soon as I get off the phone or after I get out of a meeting with my client. And I'm like, this was a great and I think very valuable conversation. I'll hop in my car and just record a video right then and there when it's fresh on my brain. And, you know, I think those are the best videos because people have that same burning question too. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, you know, when you do it that way, like you hop in your car, it kind of, it gives that whole, uh, that day in the life type mm -hmm. feel to it. Also, it's not, you know, the super glossy studio thing where I think people really connect with that, especially on, you know, the TikToks and the Instagrams. Yeah. And I think that definitely is just more my personality too. Like I'm not like the a hundred percent polished, perfect kind of person. And when it, when Instagram expects that, that's why I think I definitely lean more towards TikTok because it is a little bit more raw and unedited. And I think a little bit more real in that way. So I think that's why TikTok for me personally is going really well. Right. When you, uh, so, you know, by being able to do the off the cuff type of videos, um, do you still, you know, and you, and you mentioned, you know, bat shooting some things I have to imagine that helps, you know, both of those, having both of those strategies working together mm -hmm. really does help allow for that time where, you know, maybe you just don't have a, a, you know, an idea or a question pop up that day, but you've already shot some things and you have them in the can to post. I think that allows you to be uh, more off the cuff sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, sometimes if my client, if I have a great hour long conversation with my client, you know, I'll record three videos and then I'll just keep them in my drafts. And then if there's a day where I'm like, shoot, I have no clue what to record today or post today, then I just have something ready to go that I can post. Yeah. Are you trying to post daily to keep that, you know, keep it going and keep, you know, your face out there? That's the goal. It definitely does not always happen. But certainly when I am posting more regularly, that's when I'm seeing the most ROI. But my goal really is like at least three times a week. But um, my I really strive for every single day, if not multiple times a day. But that doesn't regularly happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For the uh, for the, the business that you have gotten, have you seen... Um, you know, or notice that the uh, the people that you once you finally do have a conversation, it's almost like they already know a lot about you and have connected with you because mm -hmm. of this almost one way conversation that you're having with them. Yep. Yeah, certainly. And it's it's so interesting where, you know, once someone reaches out to me, I think it takes a while for them to actually do that. Like I'll notice that they are liking my videos for months or, you know, sometimes I don't even notice them liking my videos, but I look back and they followed me months ago. But once they do have that initial contact with me, 
not a single client has ever interviewed me and another agent. They're saying, you're my agent. I know I want you. And they have this like fact, like no like and trust factor with you already without you ever having met them, which is incredible. And the other great thing too, is I'm, I'm really intentional about how I'm speaking to my clients and what I'm talking about to really attract my ideal client because, you know, I'm targeting a certain type of person and I've never had a client that reached that has reached out to me that I didn't absolutely love working with. So it's attracting that right type of person who's the right fit for you, just because not every agent is the right fit for every buyer or seller. Right. I want to touch on that because I think that's really interesting is, um, you know, determining who your your right client is and developing that communication strategy. So was that something that you before you really kind of started uh, going down this TikTok and content creation? Did you kind of build your client avatar? Uh, You know, now I have. But when I first started this, I mean, I feel like social media definitely wasn't as much of like a, a, a thing. You know, there wasn't as many gurus teaching about it and there wasn't as much strategy. It was really me just being like, I don't want a cold call. I don't want a door knock. I need to figure out something else that works for me. And social media just, you know, I tried a bunch of things and this is the one that stuck for me. But no, that was not what initially happened. And it wasn't I wouldn't say it was like a conscious thought, but it is something that I think I did unconsciously. So, you know, I'm talking to people who want to learn how to house hack. I'm talking to people who want to learn how to invest and buy their first home. I'm talking to a lot of women, especially because I think there are not very many you know, people teaching women, especially how to do this, because when, at the time when I bought my first home, I was a single 25 year old woman and I had no clue what to do and didn't really feel like there was anyone else doing what I was doing. So I really try to talk to that audience and then also people moving to Denver. But those are just things that I already like talking about. So it was easy. Right. Absolutely. And I, I love the fact that you, uh, you know, all the clients that you've gotten from this are people that you've enjoyed working with mm-hmm. and haven't, you know, I think that makes the the whole you know the whole process the whole career so much more enjoyable as if you are attracting the you know the like-minded people absolutely yeah and i think just i mean i'm just now starting my fourth year as an agent so it's not like i've been in this business forever but every year i feel like i get more and more clients and more and more clients that i truly love working with and i feel very fortunate that i get to do a job where you know, I basically feel like I'm working with my friends, whether it is actual friends or family members from my sphere of influence. Or, I mean, I have a client that I found on TikTok, but we've started going to dinners together. We did yoga together last week and has she's become a friend of mine. Um, but it's just because I'm attracting those people that I want to work with, which has been incredible. right. And I think that also helps, you know, like you said, you're just four years into uh, your career, but you're setting yourself up to have those long time, lifelong clients that mm-hmm. will be referring you to their friends when they start wanting to invest in other properties. You're the person you're using because you are forming such uh, close bonds with these people. Yeah, absolutely. And just on top of that, always making sure that, you know, every single client is getting the absolute, you know, full, the, the entire attention. You know, I, I need to make sure that every single client is getting the absolute best transaction and I'm giving them my full attention just because then that is how you get referrals. And I am starting to get a lot more referrals at this point in my business, just because I feel like I have done a great job for my past clients. Right. I want to touch on, you know, the personal branding side of things and you, you know, you're doing a great job of it with the content that you're creating, but, you know, really highlighting, you know, Riley and not, you know, a, a, a brokerage or a logo behind it, you're creating that brand, you know, people are coming to you specifically. And I think that's so important, you know, to set yourself up for a long lasting career because who knows what's going to happen in 10 years, you might go somewhere else, start your own thing and you want everybody to follow you and, and, you know, be with you in the long term. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think personal branding is something that I, I didn't even know what that term meant a couple years ago, but it has become such a huge cornerstone of my business. And most of my clients have no idea that I'm with Metro brokers, that I'm on the Colorado home sales Inc. team. They don't care what they want to do is they want to work with me, which I am very thankful for. But, you know, it's again, just making sure that you are truly showing up authentically, just because I think there are, you know, I mean, fitness influencers, whoever online, they're trying to show up as a certain type of persona. And then when you actually meet them, it's not the same. So I think it's worth showing up as who you are. And then that's who they're going to get because then they're going to stay with you through the end of, you know, closing a transaction. 
Right. Absolutely. I want to touch on, you know, obviously the last couple of months and, and really a few months more than that, it's been, you know, kind of bubbling and finally came to the surface, this whole uh, NAR lawsuit and everything with that, you know, have you, have you had to deal with anything, you know, to combat that? Or I have to imagine what you're doing with the relationships that you're creating with people, you know, it, I, I can't imagine that any of those issues are really going to impact you too much. Yeah, I mean, time will tell. <laughs> so right. it's definitely on my radar and definitely something I'm watching closely and concerned about. And I do think there's some good and bad that came out of it. I mean, the whole the the part about buyer agency, I think that's honestly a good thing. I think, you know, more transparency about what an agent is doing for you and the professional fees that are associated with that, I think is great just because a buyer needs to know what they can expect from an agent and if they're responsible for paying for it. And I think that's okay. But, you know, what I do think is the issue with it is I think there's going to be a lot of unintended consequences with buyers just because, you know, there are a lot of first time home buyers that can't afford to pay for an agent. So if the seller decides to not pay for the buyer's agent, then I think there will be a lot of buyers that decide to go unrepresented, even if they want an agent, they may have no choice or, you know, have to go to a discount broker that maybe truly isn't looking out for their best interests and isn't representing them to the best of their ability. So I don't, I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I'm hopeful that they will implement some changes before anything is signed in. But again, we will, we will see. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's, it's always hard to, uh, you know, to comment on those kind of things when it, it is so fluid and there's not, yes. you know, there's, there's definitely no uh, finish line to what this is going to look like. Absolutely. I think we'll see a lot of changes within our industry in the next couple of years, what, with or without this, just with how technology is advancing. And I think there are a lot of people that are very nervous. And I mean, I definitely have my days where it, it worries me too, but I think, you know, the agents that are truly looking out for their clients and are truly trying to educate their clients and helping people achieve their goals. I think those are the agents that'll stick around. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, I think what's really cool about what you're doing is that you're doing all those things while still, you know, and using that as your, your lead generation and your marketing tool. So it's, it's all kind of ingrained in your entire business. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely just like a giant, you know, when I have a client, it teaches, it gives me content and that gives me another client. And it's just like a giant web of incredible real estate. <laughs> yeah. So just, you know, four years into the career, what are you looking, you know, what is the, what are your future goals, you know, kind of short term and then, you know, long term, especially when it comes to the investing side of things. Yeah. I mean, I've always said like, I've never had the goal of being like the top producing agent in the U.S. That is not my goal by any means. It's, you know, it's very important that I am giving the best service to my clients. And if that means, you know, if I need to refer a client to another agent that I know will do right by them, then I will. So it's just making sure that I can give that really personalized hands-on experience to my clients. But, you know, I also I love to travel. I love my personal life. I love to go hiking and camping and all the fun things with my partner and my dog. So, you know, making sure to have time for those things is very important to me. So I'd rather have one or two less transactions to be able to do those things. But in terms of investing, really, my goal has for the last five to seven years has really been just financial freedom and, you know, the ability to not work if I don't want to. I mean, I eventually want to have kids and, you know, if I can take some time off and if I don't ever lead gen again, that'd be great. And I just work with, you know, referrals and family and friends and things like that. That would be amazing. But I don't see myself retiring exactly, but just having the financial comfort of being secure for the rest of my life is very attractive. So that's really where I want to get with my investing. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's really cool that, you know, um, I think uh, this younger generation, I think they're, I think they're, it's more top of mind, that type of investing, like, where can I, where can I set myself up with that passive income? So I'm not so directly tied to, you know, my career or something like that. And I think, you know, by reaching out and in getting in front of those clients, I think you are setting yourself up to be able to do the things that you want to do. Yeah, I think especially as Gen Z um, gets a little bit older and becomes more of the age of being in the workplace and being a homeowner, I think the 
I, am I allowed to curse on here? I don't know. But Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I think the term like fuck you money is big for people. Mm -hmm. So just having the money to say, you know, if your boss is a horrible person to just say, F you, I'm done. And you can walk away and not be financially stressed just to give yourself that comfort and that, you know, fallback is huge. And I think that's what a lot of people are looking for. And that's why I teach this just to give people the, you know, financial ability to do something like that if they ever need to. Yeah, absolutely. Well, before we wrap up, where can people uh, find you, you know, if they're in the Denver market or if they're anywhere else and, you know, are interested in hearing more about your house hacking tips or just seeing, you know, what you're doing uh, generally in the real estate space? Yeah, I am primarily on TikTok is where you'll mostly find me. I'm um, real estate Riley underscore Denver <laughs> and on Instagram as well. I'm not there quite as much, but I'm also on Instagram at real estate Riley. So awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, talk with us today. Yeah, it was great for to chat with you and thanks for having me. I want to thank Riley for joining us today and think that it's awesome. She has been able to use her own house hacking experience to attract new leads and build her brand around. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.